Hello, my dears, and welcome back to another episode of the Prairie Kitchen at Under a Tin Roof. I was really hoping to share this episode with you last Friday, but the weather ended up being absolutely terrible. It was really, really windy for most of the week. Obviously, this episode is going to have to do with outdoor cooking. I've been wanting to cook over the open fire on our YouTube channel for a long, long time now. I just started teaching myself how to cook over an open fire um, about two summers ago, so it hasn't been very long. But when I do get the chance to go out there, it is incredibly rewarding and I just have the best time. In today's episode, I'm going to be cooking something that I'm really familiar with. Roasting meat is something that I take a lot of pride in. I love making roast chicken or roast turkey. My roast turkey has gotten a lot of praise from strangers and my family alike. Roasting a whole chicken over an open fire is something that I have wanted to try for a long time and I just have not gotten to it mostly because I did not have the proper equipment that I wanted to use. So I ended up investing in a really gorgeous campfire cooking stand. It's by a brand on Etsy called Iron in the Fire US. I will link it in the description below. While that cooking stand is great, it does not come with a rotisserie option. I ended up finding a really beautiful roti hand forged rotisserie cooker from Townsend's, who I'm guessing you probably know if you are into historical cooking. And while I have been focusing a lot on making historical recipes, making chicken and mashed potatoes is kind of a simple meal in context. So I did end up looking through some of my historical cookbooks to kind of see if there were any differences for roasting a chicken over the fire versus roasting it in the oven. Of course, the main difference is that the chicken is not enclosed in this warm environment. Instead, it is being cooked by indirect heat from the flame and all of the smoke. Oh, of course, we will head into a little bit of a research phase, but then mostly in this episode, we're just gonna focus on the cooking and enjoy a simple meal of chicken, mashed potatoes. I ended up making some biscuits. I made some cranberry sauce, so it's going to be a really yummy and cozy episode, and I really hope that you enjoy it. I'll be preparing what one might consider a simple meal, roast chicken, mashed potatoes, cranberry sauce, and biscuits. This meal is one that I could make within a couple of hours in my gas oven. All I would have to do is season the chicken and stick it into the oven without hardly taking a peep at it. For today's video, I mainly decided to stick with my own cooking knowledge rather than turn to historical recipes. However, I did peer inside of American Cookery by Amelia Simmons to see if there were any new ideas for roasting chicken over the fire. There aren't many recipes for chicken in historical cookbooks because chicken only started becoming the popular choice for poultry in the mid 20th century. However, there was a recipe for roasting turkey or other fowl. She suggests stuffing the bird with a mixture of soft bread, eggs, thyme, marjoram, pepper, salt, and wine. I thought that this is something I wouldn't mind including. As for making mashed potatoes, not much has changed in the last 200 years. Boil them, mash them, and mix in butter and chopped herbs. I decided to take her advice and serve my meal with a simple cranberry sauce and homegrown pickles.
think I've always enjoyed cooking because it leaves my mind just enough time to flip between thoughts about the next task at hand while also having moments to consider deeper things. It's difficult not to think about the past when you are cooking this way. Humans have cooked over wood fire for hundreds of thousands of years. I've been reading Ruth Goodman's book, The Domestic Revolution, how the introduction of coal into Victorian homes changed everything. It tells the story of how coal became the fuel of choice for heating homes and cooking food, and this happened much earlier than I knew. Coal started being used as a fuel for cooking in England as early as the late 14th century, and by the mid 15th century was powering much of London. Of course, the Victorian era was undoubtedly ruled by coal, eventually leading to gas and electric stoves, and you know the rest. I started by mixing together about one and a half cups of soft bread torn into chunks mixed with about one teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon oregano or marjoram, and one teaspoon thyme. Then I added an egg and about two to three tablespoons of white wine. I used a four pound chicken and rubbed it down with salt and pepper. You want to make sure that you rub underneath the skin and inside the cavity to season the meat well. Then the stuffing went into the cavity and I tied the legs together to close the cavity as much as possible. Then the chicken was placed onto the rotisserie cooker. The fire does not need to be large, but it does need to mimic a 350 degree oven. I chopped up about three pounds of potatoes and placed them into a Dutch oven, hanging them directly over the fire. Underneath the chicken, I placed a small skillet to catch the drippings and melt some butter to brush onto the meat while it roasted. I prepared some biscuits in the house before coming outside. This biscuit recipe is from my cookbook. To bake the biscuits, you need to create an oven. This can easily be done by dragging out hot coals and setting a skillet over them. Then flip another skillet upside down to, or cover them with a Dutch oven lid. Then more hot coals go on top. 
To make sure the biscuits cook evenly, which should take about 30 minutes, you should rotate the pan and lid in opposite directions about every 10 minutes. You may also need to refresh with more hot coals. There's something primitive about cooking over a fire. It feels like connection in many ways. Another book I've been reading is Women's Diaries of the Westward Journey by Professor Lillian Schlissel. It follows the personal diaries of women that traveled during the mass migration across the Western United States. In it, she explains how many women never wanted to move west. As a modern woman, my initial thought is why not? When you knew life had the potential to be better. However, she points out that many of the people that traveled west, or at least decided to, were the men. It held promise of heroism, of starting a new life. I can understand the perspective of the women as a mother that leaving behind all of the people to help raise children would be devastating and incredibly difficult. But the more that I cook over the fire and attempt to live small moments of domestic history in my own life, I can also understand how grueling life would become for them. Women in the 19th century were not necessarily cooking every single meal without help, nor were they bent over a primitive fire. I have cooked this way for every meal before, and this is literally what you spend your entire day doing. Prepping, cooking, and cleaning up. This task mainly fell to the women along with child rearing, and they would take on the tasks that the men would normally do when the men were not there. It would be isolating and exhausting. I'm honestly surprised that anybody kept a diary at all. Rather than cook the chicken directly over the flame, it needs to be cooked off to the side and it's partially cooked by the smoke. Altogether, it should take about two hours to cook the chicken this way. Because I do live in the modern age, I use a thermometer to check the internal temperature of the meat to make sure that it reached 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm frequently asked why I choose to dress this way and do these things. Many people assume that I'm incredibly religious and they would be wrong, or that I believe this is the way women should be, which I definitely don't. Sometimes I have incredibly deep answers to this question, but what it really comes down to is that I'm simply curious. What is it like to cook in a skirt? What is it like to wear historical garments and do things that people in the past would have done? Is it more difficult? Do I like it better or worse? A way that I think and process information is more scientific and analytical than it is emotional. I feel like I'm stepping into the shoes of someone from the past or a character from a story that I really love and I'm playing a part for a bit. Perhaps that's my neurodivergent brain putting puzzle pieces together. But to me, it's really not that complicated. I am just curious and intermixed with that curiosity is my desire to make art. 
To make the cranberry sauce, I used about one and a half cups of fresh cranberries, a half cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup orange juice, and the zest of one orange. And I somehow lost the footage for this, but it's just cooked over the fire and cooked it at a simmer until it was nice and thick. To make the gravy, you simply mix the fat drippings and melted butter with some flour. You'll have to play around with the ratios. Generally, it's one to one if you like a super thick gravy. You can also water it down if you want a thinner gravy. Altogether, this entire process from setting up to finishing cooking the meal took me about five and a half hours. This was mainly due to setting up all of the equipment and getting the fire started and heated to where I needed it to be. If I had to change anything about the process, I would probably turn the chicken more consistently so that it cooked a little bit faster. I would also be more wary of the drip pan and perhaps place it on a trivet so that it's not sitting in the hot coals. This caused ashes to fall in, so I ended up just removing the drip pan for a majority of the cooking process. Hi friends, I hope that you enjoyed watching this episode. It was so, so fun to cook over the fire. Of course, you saw that it takes a ton of work to do this. The entire process of me setting up the camp and cooking the meal and serving it took about five and a half hours, which in retrospect isn't incredibly long. At least I don't find it long. I'm so used to long cooking processes at this time. In my past campfire cooking experiences, I have kind of challenged myself to just mimic what I make in the home over the fire. I did not really start with simple campfire foods. I mostly started with a lot of frying or foods that needed to be cooked over high heat. So I have learned over time that it is good to have a lot of small kindling. On the other hand, this meal was more of a slow and steady meal so it was actually really relaxing and I had a lot of fun just kind of having moments to sit and ponder rather than try to frequently run around um, and then the other thing that was really lovely is how beautiful the weather was it was about 45 degrees there was hardly any wind it was a little bit sunny here and there um, so that was really pleasant usually I'm cooking over the fire in the summer and I am drenched in sweat and it just feels absolutely miserable so anyway i really hope that you enjoyed this episode and learning how to cook over the fire or at least watching me cook over the fire and you can absolutely cook this meal in your home if you do not have access to and outdoor cooking areas, most people don't. I have written recipes for all of the different little components that were in this meal on the blog, along with instructions for how to make it in your regular oven. And you can find that on my blog at underachinroof.com. If you would like to follow along with us, I also post almost daily to our other channels. We are on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. You can also find us on Pinterest if you'd like to save our recipes over there. And if you would like to support me, I have tons of amazing recipe ebooks that you can buy on our website. We also have a quarterly seasonal magazine that's full of recipes, slow living ideas, crafts, gardening ideas. Um, our winter journal is about to come out on November 20th. Our next ebook, Christmas cookie ebook, volume two will come out on the same day as well. So I'm really excited about that. We've been working really hard to finish those up for you guys um, in time to enjoy for the holidays. Um, otherwise, no pressure. There's tons of free content on our website. I'm really excited to get into the holiday season coming in these next handful of episodes. So I will see you here next Friday with a new video. I'm so happy to have you here and thanks so much for watching. Okay, bye.